Dear colleagues, welcome to the eighth session of the series of the IPPN Knowledge Cafe. My name is Javier Bronfen. I'm the UNDP SDG Integration Advisor for Latin America and the Caribbean. It's my pleasure to moderate this eighth session of the IPPN Knowledge Cafe series. The Integrated Policy Practitioners Network is an initiative of nine founding UN entities to create a community space where we can share lessons and experience and strengthen collective capacities to apply integrated policy approaches and concrete and practical ways in support the 2030 agenda. IPPN, it's, an open, it's open to colleagues in and government, academia, and, and the broader development community. IPPN is jointly managed by UNDP, UNICEF, ILO, and FAO. The IPPN holds a series of monthly knowledge cafes to showcase insightful experience of policy integration. In today's session, we will focus on the role of cities and local authorities in accelerating SDG implementation at the local level through voluntary local reviews. Local and regional governments play a pivotal role in achieving the SDGs, including poverty eradication, food security, access to quality education and water and sanitation services, and in advancing gender equality and reducing inequalities, among others. To report their progress on the 2030 agenda, local authorities are increasingly undertaking voluntary national reviews of SDG implementation at subnational level. The VLRs can be a powerful accelerator for SDG implementation, contributing to the collective and analysis of timely, accurate, and disaggregated data, bringing stakeholders closer to decision-making processes, strengthening multi-level governance, and fostering integration of the SDGs into local planning. I'm very pleased to introduce our colleagues, Frederick Soltau, Senior Sustainable Development Officer Division for Sustainable Development Goals in UNDESA, who will tell us about the support that, that his office provides to the preparation of VLRs. After Frederick, we will hear about field experience from Ariana Rodriguez, who is advisor in the UN Resident Coordinating Office in Costa Rica, and then from Natasha Primo, who is head of organization research in policy and strategy department of the city of Cape A note on housekeeping before we start. Please make sure that your microphones are muted to allow colleagues to hear the presenters. Do use the chat function to ask questions or share your experience and insightful and insights during the presentation. After the presentation, we'll open the floor for those who wish to share comments or questions. Without further ado, I welcome Frederick for this intervention. Uh, Over to you, you Frederick. Thank you very much, Javier, and uh, welcome colleagues. Thank you for inviting uh, me and um, to this to this uh, knowledge cafe. Uh, excited to share some of the learning and um, experience around around the VLR. So um, as we as we bring up the slide, I think the first the first point I wanted to make is a little bit of background about about the voluntary local reviews. You know, um, just as we began, I, you know, our colleague Serge mentioned this is the timing is quite good because we just concluded the HRPF, the High Level Political Forum, um, which is reviewing progress on the SDGs. We saw 44 uh, countries present their voluntary national reviews and in both the sort of political session in the review of the of the goals under and review, we see a real push uh, from from local government, local government um, and its organized form, arguing that there should be more representation, more attention paid to the localization and issues of, of local government implementation of the SDGs. And similarly, in in the um, voluntary local uh, in the voluntary national review, so the national presentations. At the HLPF, more and more countries over the last two or three years are really highlighting also the work uh, of local authorities and, and subnational governments in SDG implementation. So the time is seems to be right for for looking at this issue, uh, and from from the from the side of, uh, of 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 the UN as well, the Secretary General's our common agenda um, report also uh, looks at and recognizes uh, the increased attention uh, that is that is being given to local government and recognition also of, of its role in SDG implementation. So the local voluntary local reviews a flexible tool. So voluntary that don't have a intergovernmental mandate or standard. Uh, it's sort of a bottom up uh, process that's grown up in different forms. Um, there are a number of guidelines that have, that have been developed. So there is guidance material uh, from regional commissions, for instance, in Africa, the Africa guidelines 
think tanks have developed guidelines. Um, so there's a lot of guidance material, but essentially this, this is a process and an idea that's grown up uh, um, from, from the bottom up without uh, sort of a central um, authority, if you will. One of the attractions, and we found this in our capacity building is seeing that it allows local governments to translate and express the very real uh, development concerns into the global language of the SDGs. So although the sort of global agenda actually translates very clearly into, we've seen this in our work, uh, into the sort of local issues around whether it's waste management, whether it's employment generation, public health. So the connection, which at first might seem a bit tenuous, actually in practice happens quite clearly or organically in, in our capacity building experiences and interactions with um, local governments. Of course, we also know that uh, that most or many of the targets, by some counts, up to 90 uh, of the targets in the um, in the SDGs, uh, have a clear link to to the um, to the H of to the uh, to the local government uh, implementation service delivery. So that's really uh, a key a key point uh, um, there. Um, here in this slide, you see really. Uh, it's outdated, by the way. Of course, um, we could just go back to that little map. Um, the map showing, you know, where some of these uh, these VLRs are being conducted. It's it's certainly well out of date. Um, we have about 70 plus uh, VLRs that have been submitted to DESA for posting. Again, just a, a service that's hosted on a voluntary basis. Um, others have counted, you know, 120, 130. So happening in various forms around the world. The first generation really coming from larger cities uh, that are using this path as a form of, of almost diplomacy and, uh, and outreach, but increasingly uh, also in, um, in, in, in smaller cities uh, and more diverse spread of, of cities and also states to recognize that these are also uh, at the sub-national level of states and provinces. So a real diversity um, and a real engagement through this diversity with, with the um, uh, with the agenda. Uh, next slide, please. So one thing we found, I mentioned earlier, we have a lot of guidance material, some of it, you know, most of it actually very well developed, well articulated, but quite complex. Um, and in our capacity building, what we found is that it really, really helps. We have to take that guidance material uh, and certainly some of the thinking around the SDGs and turn it into much more practical uh, tools. So when, we found that, in fact, is perhaps the gap to translate guidance material or interlinkages or mapping uh, or matrices, the kind of material that's out there, uh, into very, very uh, boiled down to the sort of nuts and bolts, the nitty gritty for capacity. So this is a slide that we've used. Uh, we've worked in a pilot project with um, local authorities in a, in a, in a remote region in, in Paraguay, the Chaco region, uh, in the Gambia with three local uh, authorities there. And, and four local authorities in, um, in Zimbabwe. Some of them are larger, but a large part of these are smaller, low, uh, you know, cities or, or local governments with low resource environments. So we've used, uh, we try to translate and really put put the, the basics, nuts and bolts together for, for uh, a capacity building. And really getting them to think around key issues, especially data, stakeholder engagement and coordination. Um, and surprisingly, we haven't had to say too much about the benefits. The message of the of the VLRs very quickly sparks interest uh, uh, among our uh, our partners who we've worked with them. It hasn't been a hard sell to make in any in, in, in any case that we've been involved in. Uh, next slide, please. So, just in, in this next slide, uh, some of the lessons learned. I mean, one key issue that does come up whether it's uh, speaking in, 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 the, in the national realm or even more so at the local level around the SDGs is of course, absence of data, lack of data. Um, and we've tried to counter that and, 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 and especially at the local level where, where um, resources are more constrained to try and find ways and ideas to think creatively around data. Uh, so we don't throw up our hands and say, there's no data we can't report. Um, so finding ways uh, of, of using both qualitative, so ob observed data uh, and quantitative data, and then saying, uh, you know, there may be administrative data or other forms of data that are uh, in already within the hands or the, the files 
of the local authorities trained in using that. So not, you know, aiming for the gold standard of, of sort of statistics, statistics, national statistics, which have been uh, collected and, and, and uh, you know, according to those standards. But if those are not available, not giving up, also thinking about outreach, which partners with the NGOs uh, and others may have data, citizen generated data that can be used to report. So being creative around data and not taking a view of, we can't do anything without um, without the sort of gold standards. Uh, and then stakeholder engagement, which is very, very critical. We found it needs two things. One, resources um, to try and whether it's facilitation, whether it's some money to hold consultative, consultative meetings, and of course, willingness. You know, sometimes the, the set of stakeholders considered is very narrow, and it's sometimes a case of nudging or, or, or encouraging to move and broaden that sense of who the stakeholders are and how they're consulted, not just to verify reports uh, or to validate reports, as some as a term we've heard, but to actually be involved at an earlier stage. I mentioned the point about simplified guidance. That's another key takeaway for us. And lastly, um, just to get on the benefits, connecting that local progress, um, this discussion on this word multi-level governance, giving local governments a voice or making a case within their, their national constitutional system, whatever the, the relationship is between the tiers or spheres of government. Um, awareness raising on the SDGs, you know, promoting development, uh, and also, of course, the potential for partnerships, thinking a little bit more uh, creatively for the potential for partnerships for local authority implementation of the SDGs. And then, of course, very important for us, and I think, uh, of course, for many, many local governments already is this focus on leaving no one behind and, 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 and pressing forward with an inclusive uh, development model. Uh, and, and that's it for, for me. Thank you very much, Javier and my colleagues. Thank you. Thank you, Frederick, for this insightful presentation and remarks. We go to Ariana now. Over. Thank you very much. Um, good morning, good evening to all. Um, thank you very much, uh, very much for having me. Just if we could maybe have. There we go. Okay, so um, I actually, my, my presentation, it connects very much with what Frederick was saying. Um, and I'm gonna talk about a little bit about the perspective from an UN country team. Uh, supporting the VLRs. Um, yes, so we can move forward. Okay, so first um, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a timeline that we implemented here in Costa Rica um, for VLR support. Um, well, first the story begins with the VNR in 2020 that Costa Rica presented that of course was very much uh, supported for, for from the UN. And in that VNR, we realized that only around 20% of Costa Rican local governments were actually implementing localizing strategies for the SDGs. So of course, we had to do something about it. Um, so with, in coordination with the national institutions that have a specific mandate for SDGs localization, uh, that in Costa Rica are the Institute for, Incipal for Municipality Promotion and the uh, Ministry of Planning. We designed it we designed a study that we call the, in Spanish, La Red de Cantones Promotores de los ODS, that in English is something like Municipalities Network for the SDGs. And this strategy, the main goal was, of course, to engage local governments to strengthen capacities for SDG localization. And we also provide to them with the recognition for the local governments that are most committed to the SDGs. Um, and currently we have 32 local governments participating in this network that, that accounts for about 39% of the total of Costa Rican local governments. Um, so we had a very, very good attention to the strategy for our first year of implementation that started in 2021. And then within this network of, of local governments, we started the engagement for the VLRs process. So we had a couple of you know, advocacy campaigns. We had a few meetings, technical meetings with UN Habitat and, and other stakeholders that allow us to 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 talk uh, directly with the with the local governments about all of the the, um, the benefits of presenting VLRs. So from this set of, of events that we had earlier this year, right now we have currently six VLRs in progress. 
Um, so we managed to, with the, with the local governments that were interested, we managed to build a working group that is being led right now by the national institution um, that is supporting you know, the, the network as a whole. And we were able to hire a local consultant to, to support directly the local governments in the presentations um, you know, in the process of building and presenting their VLRs. And right now we have, like I said, six local governments. These are Sarchi, Goicoechea, Atenas, Puriscal, Belén, y Curriabat. Um, we have a very interesting group because we have both uh, rural and urban cities, small and large. And so it, it has been a very interesting group to work with. And um, and this for also at the at the end of the year, we expect to have the results um, of the BLR, the whole documents already drafted. And we want to have our local governments engaging in national and international localization events, presenting their, their results directly. Um, okay, so also um, we have started the VLR process for around March this year. So right now we have uh, a few highlights uh, from the drafts that the local governments have been preparing. And in those, we, we, we have been able to identify main highlights, uh, main results that they have provided to us, um, you know, the benefits from presenting VLRs. So the first one uh, is very clear. And Frederick also said it, leadership is vital. Um, high, like, high level local leadership is vital for SDG localization. This is also has allowed for, um, for you know, to mayors to get directly involved in the process, has allowed to the process of uh, the VLR as a whole to run very smoothly. Um, the second one is the local governments in Costa Rica have been able to include SDGs targets in local development plans. That has been, of course, one of our main means of implementation at the local level. But also, as Frederick was saying, we have a major gap identified right now related to SDG local data production. Um, and especially, you know, uh, how are we are we understanding the indicators at the local level and how the, the local governments can produce information that, you know, because we have, of course, the National Statistics Office um, that has the national indicators for DSGs that every year um, is updating them and all. But at the local level, uh, it's very, it has been very challenging to, to understand how these indicators relate to, to the to the reality of local governments. We are designing the new indicators with them. And we, we are also with the consultancy that we had two, two main objectives for the consultancy that we are, uh, you know, the first of course supporting BLRs, but also the second goal for this consultancy is that uh, for the consultant to tell us what are these major gaps of information that we need to tackle in order to strengthen uh, local data management. And of course the VLRs in this process have been recognized as a major accelerator for local data management. Um, the fourth main highlight is partnerships. The SDGs and the VLRs are, have been recognized as a catalyst for strategic alliances and with both national institutions at the local level, but also attracting international cooperation. And the fifth um, is community engagement. The SDGs and the VLRs have strengthened the relationship of local governments with communities and civil society organizations you know, during the consultation process and fostering, of course, participation with the focus of leaving no one behind. And also we wanted to share from Costa Rica our learned lessons in this process, um, you know, supporting VLRs from, from the UNCT. So the first one is it was very, very helpful for us to have already a set national strategy where we could um, incorporate VLRs as you know within the process. And of course, this allowed us to engage the local governments from the beginning. Um, but of course, you know, allocated UN resources within the national strategy um, allowed us also for the national institutions, well, of course, to 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 believe in the idea and to to keep also for them to um, to allocate their own resources in the national strategy. Um, the second one is to make use of global resources. Um, we have made use uh, very much of, of your own habitat. Uh, they have been very, very uh, grateful with us, uh, providing us with a lot of technical um, support, you know, either also to, to strengthen our, our capacities as a team 
uh, to support the BLRs, but also directly with the local governments. Also, we have received a lot of good support from UNDESA. We, we are expecting to have a local government soon in you know one of our workshops that are working for BLRs. And also UNDP and other entities are vital for connecting cities with international opportunities. Um, the third one is to have, you know, to think of uh, in your your entity what was going to be your purpose in supporting specifically BLRs in your country. Um, for us, of course, in the main, the main, main, main goal is accelerate the SDGs at the local level. And actually, SDG localization is a great priority for for Costa Rica. Um, but for us, was also we wanted to really uh, look deeper into the you know the data management gaps that we could have. Uh, the local level so we like i said the consultancy that we hired is helping us with that so our you know the vlrs of course accelerating the use at the local level but for us in costa rica means to find these data gaps um in future cooperation opportunities at the local level and lastly the peer-to-peer -peer learning that we've been having with these group working groups with these six local governments have been uh great um for them to share uh, good practices and and to have mutual support during this process. And finally, what are our next steps on this VLR process? We call it our three big E's. Uh, the first one is evaluate. We are finishing right now the, the, the VLRs at the local level uh, with the local government. So we, this, we want to have them ready all drafted by October, 2022, um, and also validated you know, with stakeholders at the local and national level. Uh, the second one is engage. Uh, you know, once we have our main outputs for for the VLRs, we want to start engaging Costa Rican local governments in national and local national global and local um, localization events. And for this also, well, here I, I would like very much to 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 put us at this position for ev every you know event or then you know UNDP or UNDESA, South Africa or another. Uh, maybe colleagues that are watching right now, we would want to you know, share their experiences with us. We're very willing to participate. Um, so yes, that would be very, very good for us. Uh, and the third one is to escalate. Of course, we have right now 32 local governments participating in the municipalities network, uh, but we want to be working right now in escalating that number. Um, and of course, to escalate the VLRs presentation for 2023. That will be for my end. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ariana, uh, for the, all of this information that you've provided. Uh, very insightful, and uh, thank you for, for all that. We are going to give the floor to Natasha now. Over to you, Natasha. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Ariana, for your presentation. Uh, it's really interesting. Um, but yeah, thank you for the invitation uh, to also share our lessons uh, in the production of the BNR. Um, I'm going to see if I can uh, share my screen, otherwise I'll just be speaking to myself. Uh, sorry, that's not good. Let's see. Yeah, so let me know if you can see that. Um, so our journey um, with uh, the SDGs and uh, with the VLR production uh, started in about 2015. Um, we were invited um, to be part of a research project um, with about eight cities globally, um, just to test the initial uh, indicators uh, for SDG 11. Uh, and so we had kind of a an early dip uh, into just um, also understanding what our uh, data capabilities were in relation to at least one of the SDGs. Um, just to say, um, yeah, uh, so I'm speaking from the city of Cape Town experience. So, um, so a little bit different from Ariane's um, experience working you know, at a national level across different cities. Uh, and I would say, and that's probably true for most cities, uh, that it's important at the right moment and to find the right entry point. So um, in the case of the city of Cape Town, 
um, we had an approved uh, or had a plan approved, an implementation plan approved for the City of Cape Town Institute implementation um, in April 2019. And then we had also a kind of dedicated um, person, researcher who assisted us with kind of thinking through and engaging with different nine departments uh, in the City of Cape Town around uh, just what the understanding uh, was around the SDGs, the importance thereof, and how their work might be aligned uh, to, uh, to it. Um, and just to also say, I mean, we, we, we also got uh, our kickoff um, from the mayor of Cape Town, at the city of Cape Town at the time, kind of signing up also to the uh, challenge by the um, mayor of New York to uh, be part of the uh, sort of global movement uh, for city to develop the art. Um, Uh, so, yeah, on top of the 2015 um, experiment or a research project, we also did uh, some other data related work. So, um, I think one of the things that helped us uh, substantially was just developing a sort of indicator capability, um, just understanding what data was available within the city, our, our ability to report against different SDGs. Um, and where our data gaps are. Um, and, but we also took lessons from um, many of the um, people who spoke, cities who spoke through the UNDP um, sessions on VLRs, just not to be limited by the data um, that we have available within the city. So, um, so our, our lesson, one of the lessons, key lessons that we took from that was, you know, start with what we've got. Um, and you know, don't be too don't be too uh, phased by uh, the fact that you may have limited uh, uh, data. Um, just in terms of, of the the city of Cape Town uh, SDG localization approach, which was approved in 2019, we kind of had three legs to that. Um, I think the biggest uh, effort um, went into internal strengthening. So we've got a um, a technical support group basically with people from different line departments who uh, are engaged with guiding um, the city of Cape Town approach or the engagement approach around SDG localization of the city. Um, and that group uh, engages with, line, with different line departments around how they currently report on, um, on uh, programs and, and um, and activities within the city and how that may or may not be, be in alignment with, with the SDGs uh, and how it can be kind of moved towards improved alignment. Um, so that also kind of uh, then links into uh, improved SDG monitoring and reporting within the city. Um, just around national reporting, um, we've linked up with, uh, through one of the national departments, uh, with other cities, uh, especially metros within the city of Cape Town, there are nine metro uh, cities, which are sort of um, cities with that are mandated through the constitution um, to have executive functions, uh, and then under that you would have secondary cities that are kind of more organised into different districts, etc. So metro cities would be districts in their own right and within the national. Sort of national South African Centre. Um, so through this, we link in with the uh, the National Department of Cooperative Governance um, and the yeah, local authority of cooperative governance, and then with um, uh, the major uh, metros, and also with some NGOs that are supporting um, smaller or and secondary cities, um, and then in terms of global positioning, just uh, kind of participating in. Different fora, whether that's UN Habitat, uh, uh, the uh, UNDP, etc., um, to also to get exposure, to learn lessons, and also to share our experiences uh, of SDG implementation. Um, 
Yeah, so just in internal to our own process, um, the city developed a strategy, a resilient strategy in 2019. Um, we have a five year plan which just came to a close, um, the previous one uh, that ran from 2017 to 2022, um, and then also the COVID recovery plan. So there was definitely kind of that informed also our engagement and assessment of what would be priority uh, SDGs for the city of Cape Town to, uh, to focus on, um, especially for the VLR production. Um, uh, just in terms of how that process worked, um, we looked at the sort of anchor strategies within the city, so those long-term transversal uh, uh, strategies that, you know, work across functional areas, um, we also look uh, at specific domain specific strategies and then the previous mayor um, we we had uh, local government elections in November 2021 and we now have a new political leadership uh, in place we uh, just at the end of May approved the new five-year plan so we've got a new five-year plan to um, to align to but these are the um, there is a portfolio of urban sustainability projects within the city. So um, these are projects that are recognized uh, from year to year that maybe it's biennial uh, that uh, take into account uh, sustainability factors in designing those projects and programs. So in looking um, at projects within the city that uh, Kind of speak to the SDGs. We looked at those as examples uh, to uh, of work already being do, being done in the city, but also um, to kind of uh, emulate as we go forward. Um, yeah. So through that process, we identified eight uh, priority SDGs for the uh, for the VLR, um, and you know, zero hunger is actually an, an SDG that. Um, the city doesn't have cities in South Africa doesn't have a mandate around food production. Uh, it sits with provincial government and with national government as part of the Department of Agriculture, etc. Um, but as a result of the COVID-19 um, implications and especially sort of decreased food, in, uh, you know, decreased food, decreased food security within cities, we and the city kind of. Um, stepping into that into that um, space uh, with facilitating um, food distribution also within the city uh, to vulnerable communities. We, we took on um, and just wanted to report on uh, some of the work that was uh, that was happening in that. Most of the others that we identified as priorities the city uh, is active in. It's you know these are kind of the areas of uh, city mandates around service provision, but also um, facilitating um, the economic, economic growth within the city, industrialization, et cetera. Not that the city itself does it, but that it, create, it seeks to create an enabling environment. Um, yeah, in terms of the approach, uh, yeah, the VLR methodology, we you know, uh, developed, agreed on an approach, uh, how we would uh, structure it, what we would focus on, uh, what, how um, the discussions about uh, programmatic work would also be um, matched by discussions or data being made available um, in the report. So we did an assessment, um, not sort of of trends, but also we also um, try to do an assessment of SDG achievement. So we had a a methodology for uh, reporting, you know, whether there was a, a positive trend, whether there was a negative, you know, uh, a less less favorable trend, let's say, um, uh, in relation to um, the goal level, the uh, the, pro uh, the uh, priority level, and also then the, at the indicator level. So we sort of did it at three different levels. Um, then just to say, speak to the, the engagements and the partnerships that we found very useful. Um, we've got a, or we had, and that will probably continue, a, a, a quite a strong relationship with one of the local universities um, where there was an interest in working uh, with the city around the SDGs uh, through this particular re 
research program. Uh, um, there's the partnerships with the South African uh, metros, uh, and then a range of different um, international engagements, uh, some of which I've mentioned before. Um, and then uh, Frederick also earlier spoke uh, to some work that they did uh, in the Gambia. And we were sort of pulled into also a lesson sharing um, session with uh, colleagues in the Gambia um, just to go through uh, the work that we had done and, and what informed that. Um, yeah, just uh, this is just some of the, um, the framework that we used and some of the um, the actions that we managed to achieve. So just to say, um, we do now have a new five-year plan um, that has just recently been approved. And so our next step is to really uh, go back to this new five-year plan and um, deepen the alignment um, to SDGs at the programmatic level and at the project level. So um, we've got a planning process in place uh, to within this, this technical health scheme that will take the work forward um, into the next year and then beyond. Um, yeah, sorry, I, I'm trying to get to the next slide, um, but it's doing all sorts of different things. Uh, apologies for this. Um, yeah, yes, I'm sorry. sorry. Um, yeah. I, I think what I would like to highlight, yeah, I mean, we, we made some of our um, key decisions around um, both the SDG approach as well as the BLR production, uh, just through engagement in these international uh, fora um, like UNDB, UN Habit, et cetera, where people were sharing uh, their experiences. Uh, and there were different decision points um, where we sort of took from the, the guidelines as well, you know, are we going to, or were we going to have a focus only on the city of Cape Town as an organization, as the municipality, or will we try and, and have a, you know, a wider engagement with communities, etc. In the end, the focus of the BLR is very much on the city as an organization, as a municipality, because um, that was, seemed more um, uh, doable at the time. Uh, and also, I think from a political level, that was kind of where the appetite was at. So that informed our approach. Um, but there is recognition that you know the city is not the only development actor within uh, Cape Town, and at some point, you know, we need to sort of progress the SDG and the BLR production to also reflect uh, the actions of other development actors within the city. And then one of the key lessons, as I also alluded to earlier, was to not have your approach. Uh, be limited by the data that you have available. Um, yeah, we, yeah, there, there's, uh, I guess, a, a range of different sort of administrative <laughs> decisions that you have to take um, in the production of the VLR but that is, that will be relevant to your, to your particular context. Uh, and what you then decide to put into, into your VLR. Um, so some of that might be, you know, what are the priorities uh, for the city? Do you reflect on all, you know, do you reflect on all 17 uh, uh, development goals or do you only look at those that are uh, of importance for the city? Um, so those are areas for, uh, for consideration. Um, I think, yeah, so just from our perspective and from our, uh, our practice in, in the city of Cape Town, I think, um, I think it, tools to assist with that um, assessment of goal attainment, you know, how do you measure what progress you're making uh, towards SDG attainment? Um, are you progressing? Are you, uh, uh, and, you know, I, how, how are you moving in which direction? Who's, who's, who's benefiting from that. I think those are tools that I think would be of, of value uh, for everyone. Um, so better, uh, yeah. So there's, there's need for that. Um, I think, um, yeah, let me, uh, and then just building capacity around tier two and tier three 
uh, indicator reporting that's in the, that's in the uh, context of the DLR implementation and ECG localization, I think, uh, is a huge um, is a huge need. Uh, I think you know I think the, the majority of uh, many cities uh, often report on what their outputs are, so their activities, uh, and we um, lack the the information and the data. Um, and often that is very research based um, for understanding the, the impacts of our actions. So uh, the ability to report on, you know, uh, on outcomes uh, and impacts. Of our uh, so those are areas for, for further development. Uh, in our context, uh, with our new development plan uh, in place, um, we have uh, a new strategic plan, which we have uh, aligned to the SDGs. Um, and so the next steps will be just to deepen that alignment um, and the monitoring then of, um, of the city's work against the SDGs. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll pause there and um, take questions or comments. But, and thank you again for. Thank you very much, Natasha, for your lessons learned and your, all your experience from the city of Cape Town. Very insightful, uh, similarly to, to the, the Oh, sorry, I was on mute. Sorry. Thank you, Natasha, for your, your presentation and your lessons learned and experience from the, from the city of Cape Town. Very insightful, similarly to, to the other panelists. So, now we're going to move to a Q and A. We we have two questions from from the audience. Um, I think both of them uh, are targeted towards uh, Ariana. I don't know if you've seen them, but I'm going to read them to you anyway. And then I have three other questions that we've prepared for to open the discussion among among the participants and the panelists and myself. And also I have some questions that I would like to also to post for, for discussion if, if time permits. So the first couple of questions for you, Ariana, and, 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 and again, happy for, for the other panelists also to, to come in on this. But the first one is uh, about the, uh, which VLRs are going to be finalized in October 2020, 2022, and how long overall did it take uh, to complete the, the drafting of the VLR and the, the whole process? Um, and let me go right away on the second one because both of them are, are targeted to you, Ariana. <clears throat> and the second one has to do with, um, uh, do you know uh, some of the key focus on governance uh, areas or priorities of SDGs that are coming out uh, so far across the six cities or towns in Costa Rica? Um, and there would like to, to hear from uh, from the issues around migration and mobility and how uh, this uh, plays a role into this analysis. Over to you, Ariana, and of course to Natasha and Frederick. Thank you, Javier, and thank you very much for the questions, both great questions. Um, so the, for the first one, that uh, for the time that has taken us, uh, yes, we started on March this year, but we started first with just, you know, advocating you know, a lot about VLRs and strengthening capacities in local governments to, you know, to start the VLR process. And, but we do recommend, or the recommendation in general is to, to have at least six months um, for preparing the, the, the whole drafting, you know, the, the information gathering and drafting process. Um, and for the second question, Yes, we have seen a lot of similar topics around the six cities, uh, but more regarding especially urban planning, urban policies, uh, also safe water, um, environmental planning, also because we have a lot of protected areas in the country, so they have to, you know, gather around that. Um, and the topic of mobility hasn't come up very much, but it's, it's, it's because of the specific cities that we're working right now that they are not particularly host communities for migrants or refugees. Um, but if you would look, for example, if you have San Jose or the San Parados or the border communities, um, those would maybe probably have very much to talk about the topic of mobility. Uh, but I find it very interesting, um, you know, to in the future when, when we will 
do have those cities involved in the VLR process. That of course is gonna be one of the major topics, I think. Thank you. Thank you, Ariana. Um, so let, let's move on to the guiding questions that we've prepared. So there are three questions. I'm just going to read them out loud. You have them in the chat. Uh, and I'm, I'm happy if you, you can all uh, address them. And also people from, from, the, uh, from the audience can also comment or, or post their own questions. So the first one is, what are the challenges in mobilizing stakeholders at the subnational and city level to take action on SDGs? And how to, do we, we overcome them? How do local authorities collaborate with the national governments on their VLRs and SDG implementation more broadly? And the third one is the VLRs do, don't have the same status as the VNRs at the high level political forum. What is the process for local authorities to submit their VLRs and what incentivize cities in greater numbers to prepare VLRs? Over to you guys. Maybe, Javier, maybe I'll take the, the two of those questions. I think sure. one on the on the, um, the VNRs and VLRs, and that's a very interesting question. Um, and I guess every country is a bit different, but we have seen that there's a lot of openness from some countries recognizing, for instance, with stakeholder consultation for national reviews, they can piggyback and build on that of of the uh, of the VLRs, um, it's work in progress. It depends on each country's constitutional setup. Um, we have seen in some countries, though, that, for instance, their localization strategy has been spurred when they see that local authorities are autonomously on their own taking action. They kind of wake up and see, oh, these guys are doing something. We better get engagement uh, from the central level. And some countries, Argentina, I think uh, Ariana mentioned in Costa Rica. There is good sort of multi-level coordination or their councils, which for instance have local authority representation and um, you know, there's a lot of support or um, linkage, interlinkage with supporting provincial and local uh, review. So that there are models there, there are good models uh, on that side. Very briefly on the HLPF, it's true. I mean, the HLPF is of course in the first place for members, for countries. Um, but as I mentioned in my, in my introduction, there is an increased recognition of the role of local authorities and the ministerial declaration um, recognizes that from last year, uh, the, just, the, the GA resolution on the reform on, of the HRPF and ECOSOC also recognizes that. So, you know, the diplomats and the, the member states are recognizing that. And there is a space, a dedicated space. Uh, uh, this year there was a session on the local authority action. So even though they don't have that formal status, they are being increasingly recognized. Uh, the HLPF has, together with UCLG and other partners, been organizing for a number of years a two-day special event, special event called the High um, Local and Regional Governments Forum, which is dedicated to uh, to local authorities and local governments. So that space is, is I think, increasing, um, but we have to recognize it's within the framework of a member state uh, organization and, and review process. But you won't get more open to stakeholders uh, and other actors than the HRPF. I mean, it really is in some way someone called the General Assembly for Sustainability. So it's a, it's a, it is a good forum. And lastly, on the submission process, it's not a formal issue. Those who wish to submit their VRs to us can send them and we post them. Uh, and then there's a lot of other events, as, as I think Ariana was inviting our colleagues, everyone on this, uh, in, in this meeting to say, let's make the most of it. Let's highlight the work being done. I, I noted some of the points that I would, next time I speak on this topic, want to pick up. Uh, and, and let's use those available for it to, to build the momentum. Over. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. Colleagues, do you want to come in? Natasha, please go ahead. Thank you. So I'll, I'll speak to the linkages with the national. Um, and I, th I think I'll, I'll repeat what <laughs> Frederick said, that it is a work in progress. Um, we have um, the SDG uh, monitoring uh, at national level is actually uh, undertaken by the uh, the statistics uh, by Statistics South Africa. So that's the national statistical body. Um, and it does so with, um, um, on the invitation of a department within the, president's, uh, within the presidency. 
um, which is uh, the Department for Monitoring and Evaluation, uh, National Department for Monitoring and Evaluation. The, uh, the national department that is responsible for local government is something, is a separate entity. And so there's a little bit of a disconnect um, at the moment between cities um, and the uh, Department of Monitoring and Evaluation. And therefore, the uptake of, you know, a structured process for the uptake of um, cities, VNRs in the national, in the, uh, in the VNRs. Um, there is um, a willingness, but somehow we haven't been able to kind of meet um, the intent uh, around making sure that uh, the VN, the VN are adequately reflected um, in the uh, in the VNR. So, so that's something that you know it's not a it's not a, a success that we can report, uh, but it's something that um, that there is an, an, an um, recognition of a need to address. We keep bumping into each other as cities um, in various fora where we share our experiences are around the VLR production, um, but the the, the national report production is, is not where it should be. Um, and then just in terms, I think that was the one question. Um, and I have to go back and look at the challenges of mobilizing stakeholders. So uh, um, within the city level, um, because our VLR is very much city focused uh, as, the, in, as in the municipality, it is, um, you know, there's various, I think there's various levels of understanding of the SDGs or exposure to the SDGs, but it's the work of the technical task team to kind of build that capacity within the city. Uh, so that's a slow kind of laborious, um, maybe that's not the right word, but it is a, it is a, a process that you kind of uh, don't rush um, and because you have to take people with you. Um, and so, you know, it's, we're basically moving from director to director and department to department. Um, but because at the political level with the new mayor and the new political leadership, there's been a very um, um, conscious, active, uh, expressed um, desire uh, and support for alignment to the, to the SDGs that this process will be um, supported and uh, we can leverage the, the, the political support to advance uh, SDG alignment within the city. So that's where we are at at the moment. Um, you know, the SDG alignment of the, of the new plan is in the strategic document. Uh, and so that's the basis for, you know, our jump off point for the next phase. So, so that should help with um, sort of mobilizing and, uh, with, uh, and aligning Thank you, yes, I would um, just like to add uh, a couple of things to what my colleagues already uh, said, but the first one is the challenge is, is clear and Natasha already said it is, you know, people don't know about the SDGs first and foremost, so you have to uh, take care, you know, maybe advocacy campaigns for the SDGs, trainings, we have done a lot, uh, the local governments have asked us as UN to support a lot of training um, and, you know, sensibilizing with local authorities and other local institutions, so that, that's the first. Um, then also in Costa Rica about the governance, um, we have a governance structure for the SDGs that has been set since 2017, and the local governments are part of this governance structure, so in that way they you know they they participate um within the national sdgs implementing process and of course um through our our local governments uh sdgs network um that's a, a platform for them to participate and to engage with the national government and also we're expecting for the vlrs of course to um, to contribute to the VNR that Costa Rica is representing soon. We don't know if yet be 2023, 2024, but um, that's gonna be one of our main inputs. And also um, we like to 
you know, to see the, the VLRs and the localization process also as a cycle, you know, because we started with the VNR when we got, you know, the main input, the local governments are not doing enough with the SDGs. So then we implemented, you know, the strategies and all VLRs, and then the VLRs are also going to be, uh, you know, inputs for the VNR. So that, that's a, a very interesting way to look at it. The whole SDGs process, of course, from the systemic point of view, but also think of it as a cycle, as a movie, you know, that is passing, not just a picture uh, in, in a specific way. And for the, the last question, uh, also to, to point out what Frederick was saying, is I actually this year, I realized uh, something I learned is that the High Level Political Forum, of course, is a great space, very important, but, but it's not the only one where cities can be presenting and discussing about the VLRs. So there are a lot of other um, international possibilities and events that you know we could be participating um, and we can be dedicated also for this. So. Thank you, Ariana. Uh, we have two more minutes and I have to, to close, but I would like also to, to just provide some, some food for thought on, on, on this important issue. One is that uh, to me, VLRs uh, are also an opportunity to reprioritize right, the SDGs at the local level, um, given that local authorities have much or supposedly have much more, have much more information about uh, their communities they can reprioritize and be linked from, from the national review, which it's a, a, an encompassing process. So this could you know, help uh, the local government in not just prioritizing, but also following up on, on these priorities. Uh, so I see, I see a lot of potential in, in, in that development process at the local level through the, through the VLRs. I also see um, some, some 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 challenges in terms of both with the VLRs and the VNRs is that we use uh, how do we use this um, this tool right as as you all said at the beginning the one of the the main goals of the of these reviews are the acceleration of SDGs but how do we move and this is very much uh, in line with what Ariana was saying it's that how how do we move from the picture right to the movie how do we move from the from knowing where we are in each of the prioritized SDGs to implementing right programs and projects that are going to move the needle in 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 those uh, in in those goals uh, in order to improve the, the development of of our communities. So how do we position these tools? How do we leverage these tools? The evidence that has been collected in order to change policy to move forward and, and achieve the 2030 agenda. So those are, again, questions from food for thought, and I'm sure we're all pondering about that. Um, I would like definitely to, to thank you, uh, to, our, to thank our, our three speakers, Frey uh, Soltao from UNDESA, Ariana Rodriguez from the UN Resident Coordinating Office in Costa Rica, and Natasha Primo uh, of the city of Cape Town. Thank you for sharing your experiences. Uh, on these voluntary local reviews, the lessons learned, um, and the preparation and recording of this session will be posted on, on the event page later today. Uh, so for all of you to, to revisit this conversation and to share it with, with people that you think could be interested. Our next IPPN uh, Knowledge Cafe, which will take place in September after the summer break, uh, we look forward to having all of you in the next session. Uh, we're going to close now. Thank you again very much uh, to all of you for participating, our colleagues uh, in many places of the world. Thank you very much again. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.